A local ambulance suddenly closes, a man attempts to hide drugs on a kid, and a knife attack sends two people to the hospital. And it all happened this week. Welcome everyone to This Week, I'm Sean Allen. For the next half hour, we'll catch you up on news you may have missed and give you updates on the week that was in your hometown. EKB News was the first to bring you the story of the unexpected closure of Left Beaver Ambulance Service. EKB News reporter Shelby Steele investigated what led to the closure and what will happen next. As of midnight this morning, the Left Beaver Ambulance Service, which has provided service in Floyd County since 1978, is no longer in operation. According to Assistant Emergency Medical Services Chief Kevin Thacker, the ambulance service was a victim of circumstances. He says the Left Beaver Ambulance Service could only operate with money generated from patients transported and the company was receiving low reimbursements due to patients having little or no health care. While many Left Beaver residents are concerned, Floyd County Judge Executive Ben Hill and Transtar Ambulance Service officials say it's not necessary to worry. I can assure you that there will be no lapse in, in service. The Left Beaver Ambulance Service was a privately owned operation. While it was housed in the same building as the Left Beaver Volunteer Fire Department, it was a separate entity. The fire department will remain in operation. Also, the Floyd County Fiscal Court does not own or operate the ambulance service. This was not something that the county has any control over. These are private organizations like any other ambulance service within the state. Transtar Ambulance Services has a county-wide license and will now provide service for those in Left Beaver. While the county does not own an ambulance service, Floyd County Judge Executive Ben Hill says he is doing everything in his power to make sure Left Beaver residents still have a functional ambulance service. We offered them parking area and so forth for them to uh, park their ambulances and even some office space. I even offered my office there at Left Beaver as a temporary spot for them to operate out of. Left Beaver residents can call 911 or Transtar directly for assistance. In Left Beaver, Shelby Still, EKB News. Deputies were on the lookout Tuesday night for a vehicle matching the description of one found in the parking lot of Eastern Heights Motel in Ival. The owner of the vehicle, 39-year-old Christopher Hamilton of Dana, was found to have active warrants. Deputies found Hamilton in one of the rooms, but he was not alone. 34-year-old Benita Joe Boyd of Grethel and 32-year-old Richard Brandon Mullins of David were also in the room. All three were arrested after a small baggie of what appeared to be meth was found lying in plain view on a dresser. As the suspects were being taken out of the motel room, one of them decided to flee. Mr. Mullins decided that he was going to run on foot. Uh, he took off running through a grassy field and then across the four lane and into a briar thicket. Our canine leader came down and uh, was able to immediately track him to his location and we were able to take him into custody without any further incident. A uh, leader of the canine dog was able to go back inside the room and make several positive hits for uh, drugs. Upon searching those locations, we were able to discover a small uh, case with several baggies of uh, what appears to be crystal meth uh, prepackaged for sale. Uh, through investigation, we were able to find out that that was actually, they actually belonged to Mr. Mullins. Boyd and Hamilton were charged with possession of a controlled substance, and Mullins was charged with trafficking in a controlled substance, fleeing and evading from police. Police say a man attempted to conceal drugs on a juvenile during a traffic stop. It happened in Royalton when McGoffin County deputies stopped a 2006 Chrysler Sebring for having no taillights. The driver, 40-year-old Jason Nichols of Salyersville, told officers that he shot up Suboxone and meth and would be dirty if they gave him a drug test. A juvenile passenger was found to be in possession of a small blue bag that appeared to contain meth. He told officers that Nichols gave him the bag of meth to hold before getting pulled over. Nichols was arrested and charged with trafficking in a controlled substance, drug paraphernalia, 
and unlawful transaction with a minor. He was lodged in the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center. A Pike County man was indicted last week for allegedly using a computer or other communications device to entice a minor into having sex. According to the indictment, 29-year-old Jonathan Sawyers of the Millard area in Pike County communicated with a juvenile over a three-week period in July in an attempt to get the minor to have sexual contact with him. Pike Commonwealth's attorney Rick Bartley said the crime came to light after a friend of the minor found out about the communication between the two and reported it to an adult. Jonathan Sawyers had been trying to do these things the Sheriff's Department did an excellent job of investigating. They were able to get copies of Facebook messages and other types of electronic communication showing no question that he was trying to get a minor to have sex with him. And we intend to see what we can do to let him know this is not proper conduct and also anybody else that may be engaging in this type of conduct. It is criminal, and we will take it very seriously. The charge of using a computer or communication systems for the purpose of procuring or promoting the use of a minor for unlawful sexual activity that Sawyers is facing is a Class D felony, punishable by up to five years in prison. Kentucky State Police Post 13 is investigating an apparent knife attack that sent two men to the hospital and a woman to jail. Police were called Monday night to re report of a three people fighting in the roadway at Mullins Branch at Kite. Once at the scene, police determined that Kelvin Hall, Justin Cottle, and Terry Sutton had all been fighting when Sutton pulled a knife and allegedly attacked Hall with it. Hall was airlifted from the scene to Pikeville Medical Center for treatment. Cottle also sustained lacerations and was taken to McDowell ARH Hospital. Sutton was arrested and charged with first degree assault. She is lodged in the Kentucky River Regional Jail. The Williamson Police Department is asking for the public's assistance in identifying a suspect. According to police, the man in this video is wanted in connection of destruction and theft of parking meters. It happened around 345 Sunday evening in the municipal parking lot on 2nd Avenue in Williamson. The alleged suspect is a white, heavyset male. He was last seen wearing a black shirt and overalls. Officers say getting into a parking meter, it's not an easy task. You have to have a special key to get into it to access the meter part where the, the time clock is and the base part has to have a special key to get into where the actual money is. The suspect, according to the video, tuck and twisted and broke the, broke the head off the bottom part of the base to access the money. He took the money tray and the, the uh, access door to the bottom part, but left the meter head and the time clock setting on the, on the guardrail where the meters was located. If they can't be fixed, they're going to cost anywhere from four to $500 uh, to replace them. Hall went on to say that the meters had recently been emptied and that the suspect is estimated to have only gotten $35 to $40. If anyone has any information regarding this case, contact the Williamson Police Department at 304-235-2570. Callers can, of course, remain anonymous. Coming up, the city of Prestonsburg is revitalizing an old attraction and a rehab facility is using the experience of recovering addicts to help their clients. It's all coming up next on This Week. Attention nurse practitioners. If you want to spend more time with the family, the perfect position is available as PMC is hiring for school nurse practitioner positions. You can work while kids are in school and be off in the summer with pay starting at over $38 an hour and an excellent benefit package. To learn more, call Allison Lovely with PMC Recruitment Services at 606-218-4915. 606-218-4915. Pikeville Medical Center, an equal opportunity employer. Golden Corral now opens at 9.30 a.m. for seven-day brunch. Maybe you showed up for the strawberry cheesecake French toast, or made to order omelets, or delicious carved ham. Is that a mashed potato volcano? Nice. We have over 150 choices, but the only one that matters is yours. Golden Corral, your choice rule. 
America is being battered by an unprecedented hurricane season. First came the devastation of Harvey. Now other hurricanes are threatening people's lives and homes. East Kentucky Broadcasting and Pikeville Medical Center will host East Kentucky Cares Hurricane Relief, a live radio telethon Thursday, September 14th, starting at noon. The great people at DoubleQuick are helping with donation jars at all their registers, as are many other local businesses. Proceeds go to the American Red Cross as they help those whose lives and homes are affected by the hurricanes. So start raising money or collecting money now and come by or call the live radio telethon at Pikeville Medical Center. That's Thursday, September 14th. East Kentucky Cares Hurricane Relief. Thursday, September 14th at Pikeville Medical Center on the stations of East Kentucky Broadcasting. In March, EKB News brought you the story of a lease agreement between the Kentucky State Parks and the City of Prestonsburg, which will allow the city to take around 300 acres of Jenny Wiley State Resort Park and develop it for new attractions and the revitalization of old ones. Preliminary work began Monday on reopening the old Jenny Wiley Pool. The pool has been closed for well over 10 years, and the deterioration and vandalism has taken a toll on the facility. Just recently, I've got the okay from the Corps to go ahead and start cleaning up, start getting it ready. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do just to get to the point so we can start rebuilding it. As you see here, they busted the walls out just to get to the copper pipe. This porcelain breakage right here, nothing but vandalism. There's no benefit in that whatsoever. They got no benefit from it. But as you see, they crawl back in the pipe chase, they cut the copper lines out. For what damage they've done and what maybe maybe a hundred bucks they got out of it, it's going to cost us about $40,000 to get everything back in correctly. But the good thing is we're putting it back. We're going to try to reopen in the spring. We look for good things to happen. Mayor Stapleton also said there are plans of adding a beach area just outside the pool. September is National Recovery Month. Over the next few weeks, we'll bring you recovery-related stories in an effort to show that recovery works. I had a chance to visit a facility that utilizes the experience of recovering addicts in addition to certified counselors to help their clients. Seeking treatment for addiction is one of the most courageous and most important decisions a person can make. It's also one of the scariest. Treatment is overwhelming. It's not exactly something that you're excited to be into. So. When you go, you're scared first off about who you're going to be there with and uh, mostly about who's there you're going to be able to relate to. The staff at Mountain Center for Recovery and Hope in Prestonsburg is trying to alleviate some of their clients' fears by employing peer support specialists. Peer support is a person that's overcame addiction. Uh, we suffered with all the trauma and the uh, some co-occurring disorders, but we maintained recovery and have, have stayed substance-free for a substantial amount of time. Peer support specialists give their clients something no one else can. Peer support honestly uh, kept me there. You know, they they knew exactly what I was going through, and they knew exactly what to say. And when you when you tell a counselor how you're thinking they're not going to have the same reaction that someone who is battling addiction would have. Peer support staff not only benefits the client, but the staff as well, because the benefit of one addict helping another is without parallel. It keeps me grounded in my steps. I have to keep working the program I was introduced to uh, through Alcoholics Anonymous, and it was the 12 steps. And that keeps me balanced in my thinking, my motives, and my attitudes towards life. For more information on the Mountain Center for Recovery and Hope, visit the web address listed on your screen. Reporting from Prestonsburg, I'm Sean Allen for EKB News. Coming up, we'll tell you about a safe way to donate to hurricane victims and EKB Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins will be in with a look back at the week in weather. It's all coming up next on This Week. Pikeville Medical Center congratulates Mayo Clinic for being ranked the number one hospital in the nation. Earning the number one ranking from U.S. News and World Report as the top hospital in America really affirms two things. One, it affirms the quality of the practice. 
at Mayo Clinic, and secondly, it affirms the Mayo model of care. Pikeville Medical Center is a proud member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network. PMC and Mayo Clinic, working together, working for you. Are you tired of pushing pins? Is your boss the worst? Co-workers driving you bonkers. Those cubicle walls seem smaller every day, don't they? You need a change. Here at East Kentucky Broadcasting, we invite you to join our dynamic sales team. Trade in that cubicle for wide open spaces, endless income potential, benefits, travel reimbursements, but wait, there's more. Join our team today and find yourself among the region's top marketing experts. Rub elbows with sales most elite. Send your resume in or visit our glamorous studios to fill out an application in person. Appalachian Wireless and the stations of East Kentucky Broadcasting present the long, hot summer of cold, hard cash. And while summer is indeed winding down, you still have plenty of opportunity to win big. Money. 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 Register at your local Appalachian Wireless location every week. We'll give away $500 in cold, hard cash every Friday till Labor Day. The more you enter, the more chances you have to win. No purchase necessary. All entries stay eligible for the $3,000 grand prize to be given away Friday, September 1st. You can also like and share our cold, hard cash post on Facebook for a chance at the grand prize. Money, 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 money. You may be just as lucky as last week's winner. My name's Ollie Rowe. I'm from Mealy, Kentucky, and I just won $500 from Appalachian Wireless. The long, hot summer of cold, hard cash. Exclusively on the stations of East Kentucky Broadcasting and Appalachian Wireless. We have all been moved by the devastating effects of Hurricane Harvey and Hurricane Irma. Although you may want to donate to relief efforts, officials have been warning of scammers pretending to be collecting for hurricane relief efforts, making it hard to know just who you can trust. That's why Pikeville Medical Center and East Kentucky Broadcasting are teaming up for a special event this week to show just how much Eastern Kentucky cares. EKB News reporter Shannon Deskins has the details. For the past few weeks, national headlines have centered around Hurricane Harvey, which damaged 100,000 homes and claimed at least 40 lives in the Houston area. And now, all eyes are on the most powerful Atlantic hurricane in history, Hurricane Irma, which is setting its sights on Florida. Both of these storms will leave millions of Americans devastated. As they have done many times in the past, the radio and television stations of East Kentucky Broadcasting are partnering with Pikeville Medical Center to host a radio telethon to raise money for relief efforts on Thursday, September 14th, beginning at noon. It's the kind of thing we do at times like this. We really want to help, and we know we've got great listeners and great viewers, and they want to help. So this is a good opportunity to pull everybody together and see what we can do when we really pool our resources. And Johnson says by bringing two companies together with one common goal in mind, much more can be accomplished. That partnership with Pikeville Medical Center is so powerful. Their employees donate so much in terms of giving up their vacation time and turning that into cash they can donate. Um, they also do payroll deductions. The past two radio telethons have raised money for natural disasters that occurred here in eastern Kentucky. But she says now those in our region who received help have the opportunity to pay it forward. People around here are accustomed to natural disasters. We've experienced our own floods and blizzards and terrible storms, so we know what this is like, and that's a big reason I think people want to help so much. And that opportunity will come Thursday, beginning at noon on the radio and television stations of East Kentucky Broadcasting, as well as online at ekbtv.com. And volunteers will be on hand to accept donations as they come in, whether by phone, online, or in person. Also, we'll have people outside taking donations. It'll be like a drive through If you want to come through that circle and drop off your change from your car or from your pockets, or hopefully people will have done some fundraisers between now and then, and they'll have some bigger amounts to bring. The radio telethon will be broadcast from the second floor atrium of Pikeville Medical Center. In Pikeville, I'm Shannon Deskins for EKB News. All right, now here's EKB Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins with a look back at the week in weather. Thanks, Sean. Temperatures on Monday, we're close to where we should be this time of the year. We should be around 81 degrees for the high, 61 degrees for the low. And we were actually at 83 on Monday, 62 the overnight low, mostly sunny skies. 
We did pick up a little rain on Tuesday. That's the only day this week that we had rain in the forecast. Three tenths of an inch of rain officially in Jackson. That cooled temperatures down to 71 and 59 and the trend just kept on going all the way into Wednesday. The high temperature 69 degrees, 53 the overnight low by Thursday. Only 70 pleasant degrees. Temperatures though, look at that, 47 officially in Jackson. That tied a record at the National Weather Service. And then as we wrapped up the week on Friday, 74 degrees, great out there for any plans you had, uh, maybe those Friday night football games. Temperatures though, 49 to start the day, and that broke a record that was set back in 1988 of 51 degrees. Now, of course, we're into the weekend. All eyes on Hurricane Irma making landfall, of course, this weekend in Florida. The remnants of Irma head this way as we get into Monday night and last through the better part of next week, something we'll continue to watch. Sean will be back with more coming up. Pikeville Medical Center congratulates Mayo Clinic for being ranked the number one hospital in the nation and the number one hospital in eight specialties by U.S. News & World Report. As a result of these outstanding rankings, Mayo Clinic was named to U.S. News & World Report's prestigious honor roll. PMC is a proud member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network. PMC and Mayo Clinic, working together, working for you. Golden Corral now opens at 9.30 a.m. for seven-day brunch. Maybe you showed up for the strawberry cheesecake French toast, or made to order omelets, or delicious carved ham. Is that a mashed potato volcano? Nice. We have over 150 choices, but the only one that matters is yours. Golden Corral, your choice rule. America is being battered by an unprecedented hurricane season. First came the devastation of Harvey. Now other hurricanes are threatening people's lives and homes. East Kentucky Broadcasting and Pikeville Medical Center will host East Kentucky Cares Hurricane Relief, a live radio telethon Thursday, September 14th, starting at noon. The great people at DoubleQuick are helping with donation jars at all their registers, as are many other local businesses. Proceeds go to the American Red Cross as they help those whose lives and homes are affected by the hurricanes. So start raising money or collecting money now and come by or call the live radio telethon at Pikeville Medical Center. That's Thursday, September 14th. East Kentucky Cares Hurricane Relief. Thursday, September 14th at Pikeville Medical Center on the stations of East Kentucky Broadcasting. And this weekend sports with Hurricane Irma on the minds of Floridians and those along the East Coast. The University of Pikeville Bears home opener with Ave Maria University out of Southwest Florida. It's been postponed until September 22nd due to travel concerns for the gyrenes. The game originally had been scheduled for this Saturday at the Hamley Complex in Pikeville. I spoke with UPike head coach Al Holland on what that schedule change means for UPike. Instead of preparing for Ave Marie, let's go back and prepare for the Bears and let's try to better ourselves and get back to the fundamentals and, and try to get better. So it's been a tough start for us and you know you don't want no program to, to start the way we have with, with injuries, uh, but there's nothing you can do about it. And uh, you got a next man up mentality. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to continue to work hard. Uh, very proud of this group. I love this group of kids and they're going to uh, put in the time and, and work to, to do things the right way. We're going to win with class and lose with class. And uh, you know, we've just been on the downfall the first two weeks we gotta get back to the drawing board and this week the kentucky associated press released its weekly high school football rankings with 11 coverage area teams in five classes ranked from number one to receiving votes kentucky ap coverage area teams rankings in single a hazard second paintsville third pikeville fifth and the phelps hornets received votes in double a it was prestonsburg outside the top 10 receiving votes triple a has belfry at number three Receiving votes, Floyd Central, Lawrence County, and Knott Central. And in Kentucky, 4A, Johnson Central at number one. In 5A, Perry Central, outside the top 10, receiving votes. We spoke to Phelps head coach David Jones about what it means to the Hornets program to be mentioned in the rankings. 
Um, it's a lot of excitement in the community. Uh, a lot of excitement, you know, uh, you know, just the players just getting the opportunity, to, you know, to get some recognition and stuff. And they put a lot of hard work in in the summer and in the spring. And uh, you know, it's all paying off. And you know, we, we had sort of a losing mentality up there, and, you know, and, it's, and they're getting the itch of this winning stuff. And I kind of like it myself, you know. So it's uh, it's been a it's been a great process and, and just fun to be around. Man, I mean, it, it makes me feel excited because you know. And they know they, you know, they look in, they look at stuff like that, but they know to put it in the back of their head. But just get some recognition back up there, and you know, and it's great to see the AP, everybody across the state is actually noticing what we're doing. And you know, like I tell the boys, you know, it's it's week by week, one game at a time, and you know, you know, we just see where we are uh, this week coming. And this week, the championship game of the All A Volleyball Tournament, the Pikeville Panthers and Paintsville Lady Tigers met at East Ridge High School. This matchup lived up to its billing as two great teams battled for the title. Paintsville's ladies jumped out to an early lead and the Lady Panthers were in catch-up mode much of the night. The Lady Tigers would come out on top in set 125-20. In the second set, Paintsville took the early lead 9-6. The score stayed tight the entire set till the Lady Tigers go on a run to extend the lead and close out the match win. 25-20, 25-20. Paintsville's Lady Tigers, 15th Region All-A Volleyball Champions. That's going to do it. That's what happened this week in sports. Stay tuned. Sean comes back with more after this. Pikeville Medical Center congratulates Mayo Clinic for being ranked the number one hospital in the nation. Earning the number one ranking from U.S. News & World Report as the top hospital in America really affirms two things. One, it affirms the quality of the practice at Mayo Clinic, and secondly, it affirms the Mayo model of care. Pikeville Medical Center is a proud member of the Mayo Clinic Care Network, PMC and Mayo Clinic, working together, working for you. Hit City USA, the biggest hits that defined your generation. From the artists that will forever be a part of our lives. Oh, don't you know that it's wrong? And start your mornings off right with Jump Start, featuring Paul Manuel weekday mornings from 6 to 9, only on Hit City USA. Eastern Kentucky, beautiful, green, peaceful friendly. But there's a darker side to these mountains. When crime is committed, sometimes cases go unsolved. Occasionally, the perpetrators even get away with murder. On our latest news segment, The Scene of the Crime, I'll be working with local law enforcement to help find justice for victims and their families. The Scene of the Crime, Fridays at 6 and 10, brought to you by Billy Johnson, your injury attorney. Here are a few upcoming events that you may be interested in. The Appalachian Artisan Center in Heinemann will be hosting a closing reception for artist Pam Ophield Mead's newest exhibit titled Seasons of Chaos, Rivers That Heal. The event will be held Friday, September the 15th from 6 to 7 p.m. in the Appalachian Artisan Center's downstairs featured gallery. Apple Red Legal Aid will be having their Bluegrass Benefit Concert at the Mountain Arts Center in Prestonsburg, Saturday, September 16th from 7 to 9. Come out and enjoy Ralph Stanley II and the Clinch Mountain Boys with Cold Town Dixie as their special guest. Call 1-888-MAC-ARTS or log on to macarts.com for ticket info. I hope you enjoyed our look back at some of the stories that made headlines this week. Be sure to tune in next weekend at 6.30 p.m. right here on EKB-TV. For this week, I'm Sean Allen. Have a great weekend.